Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's gonna be an NFT focused video, basically centered around what an NFT is, how NFTs work, how to obtain your very first NFT, and the whole step to get your first NFT. So please stick around, smash that like button if you're excited, and let's get into this. So the most important step to getting your very first NFT is to have a wallet. For most of you, you probably already have a wallet, something like either Trust Wallet or maybe MetaMask. Now, if you have a Trust Wallet account, all you have to do is import your seed phrase into MetaMask. Now real quick, I'm just going to show you how that works. If you didn't know, if you do have a Trust Wallet account and you want to have a MetaMask account, you're going to need to import your seed phrase. What your seed phrase is, is that 12-digit password that you were given when you first set up your wallet. So all you have to do, my friends, is download the MetaMask extension for your browser. Once you do that, you're going to click on the MetaMask logo. And it's going to come up with something like this. Now this little wolf here is going to just follow your cursor around. I think that's a fox actually, my bad. But basically, you guys, all you're going to have to do is hit imports using secret recovery phrase. Now, once you hit import using your secret recovery phrase, basically what's going to happen is a box is gonna pop up and it's gonna ask for your recovery phrase. All you're gonna do is put in that 12 or 13 digit phrase and it should automatically open up and unlock your wallet. So instead of seeing that blank screen, you're basically gonna see something like this right here. Now, basically this menu is just gonna show you the different coins that you have. Basically at the very top, it has the network that you're on. Mine is on smart chain. But if I switch it over to the Ethereum network, which is what you're going to be using if you are buying your first NFT. If I switch it over to the Ethereum network, you can see I have 0.17 ETH in my MetaMask. That's basically what I'm going to be using when I buy my very first NFT. Now, some of you might be confused and might be wondering why you need MetaMask. Well, it just turns out that MetaMask is a lot easier to use on these platforms. It's just a one or two click system. Instead of having to use your phone or wallet connect, all you have to use is MetaMask. The cool thing about MetaMask is that Trust Wallet works interchangeably with a MetaMask. Like I showed you, all you have to do is put your seed phrase in and it automatically imports your wallet from Trust Wallet over to MetaMask. So the next step is gonna be putting Ethereum in your wallet. Now you wanna make sure that you have enough Ethereum to not only cover the NFT purchase that you're making, but also to cover the gas fees. Gas is pretty random, but at the moment it's usually around $50 for a transaction. Now due to a lot of NFT projects launching on the Ethereum blockchain, from time to time during the day, Ethereum gas can get very pricey. I'm talking thousands of guay just for one transaction. What do I mean by that? Well basically, if you go to gasnow.org, you can see real time gas prices. Now ever since the last fork in Ethereum, gas prices have been pretty high. I'm going to attribute that to most of the miners or the nodes just not being online right now. As time goes on and as Ethereum 2 eventually rolls out, gas fees should gradually get a lot better. But right now you can see these four different numbers right here. Now really the only ones that you need to pay attention to are fast and rapid. Whenever you're making a transaction on the Ethereum network, you have to use what is called gas or GUE to get your transaction to go through. Now you're going to need to use a certain number to get that transaction to go through. The whole point is to use more than everyone else so that your transaction goes through quicker, gets kind of front run, but doesn't actually get left behind. Most people like to use the analogy of a bus stop. Whoever pays first gets on the bus. When there's no more spots, the bus leaves and another one comes through. It's the same exact thing for the Ethereum network. So I've basically shown you guys what gas is. I told you about Ethereum, where you're gonna wanna make sure you have Ethereum in your wallet. Now, one of the easiest ways to do this is to go on a site like either Coinbase or a exchange like maybe Binance. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you buy the Ethereum that you need, make sure you have enough for gas. Like I said, gas can be pretty variable depending on the transaction that you're doing. And then you're gonna wanna send that Ethereum over to your MetaMask address. Now, the cool thing about this address right here is that it is the exact same address that's in your trust wallet. So it shows I have $590 $94 in Ethereum, I have that exact amount in my trust wallet. It works interchangeably. So guys, you have your wallet and you have your Ethereum ready. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to head on over to the website where you're gonna be minting your very first NFT. So most, if not all NFTs actually have a project website that you're gonna to go to so you can link and launch and mint your very first NFT. Now I'm using the Fang Gang as an example. They're actually already sold out. You can see their timer went down to zero and they have none left to mint. The thing about this that I wanted to show you though is that it has all of your basics laid out. You can see it is 0 0.04 Ethereum and there are none left. The max you can mint is 10 and this little drop down right here would let you choose from 1 to 10. Now basically how that works is that you can mint up to 10 in one transaction. So 0.04 times 10 is just going to be 0.4 Ethereum plus whatever the gas fees are at that moment if you wanted to mint 10 of these Fangang NFTs at one time. So I'm just going to scroll through real quick so you can see this is basically what NFTs look like. They're really just randomized or randomly generated artwork. So you can see some NFT websites are going to have what's known as a roadmap which basically just tells you everything about 
about this NFT project, what they're going to be doing, what's going to happen when they reach 100% and sell out. You can see how Rarity works. And then you can also see they have a merch store, they have some Q&A going on, and then they have the founding fangsters over here, which is just basically all the founders of the project. The reason I'm showing you guys this is just so you can basically get an understanding of what an NFT launch page looks like. Because all of the websites that have NFT launches on them usually are kind of similar. They don't really have to have a lot of information. Just all the general information that you would really want to know about a project is most likely going to be on this landing page. So basically, once you're on this page right here, you're going to want to mint and connect your wallet. Now, since I don't have any projects that are actually open right now that I could mint, I'm using these people as an example. What you would do is you would hit connect, which would be right here. Your trust wallet would open up right here. And it would just basically ask, hey, are you sure you want to sign this transaction and connect to this website? You would just hit yes or confirm. And then your wallet should automatically connect to the website. It would then say, hey, choose the amount that you want. I would choose probably one or two. You would hit mint. It would come back up in here. And then it would say, hey, confirm this transaction. And it would give you a gas fee. Now I'm going to show you what that would look like on what is known as the secondary market, which would be OpenSea or an NFT platform like an OpenSea. That is basically just a secondary market or the second place that NFTs from a project are going to be sold. So right here, I'm just going to show you guys the Fangang NFT collection. You can see they're a little bit more expensive than what they were when they launched at launch it was 0.04 ethereum right now it is 0.29 as the base floor price that basically just means 0.29 it's one of the lowest prices that you can pay to get your hands on one of these nfts to use another project that's pretty relevant right now we're going to look at crazy koalas now crazy koalas have a lower floor price at 0.07 ethereum what that basically means is that it's a little bit cheaper to get into this project and to buy your first nft so i'm just going to go ahead and use this cute little guy right here as my first example for buying an nft the buying and minting process looks pretty much identical so you're just gonna hit buy now you're gonna go ahead and sign into your wallet it's gonna pop up a little window like this which is basically just gonna have your checkout summary it's gonna have your subtotal which is 0.068 ethereum that would be roughly 232 dollars you're gonna hit I agree and hit checkout now when you do that it's basically gonna prompt MetaMask. Now MetaMask is going to open up and it's going to have two different things here. So you can see it has your suggested gas fee. Now since it has your suggested gas fee right here, what you're going to want to do is hit edit. Now when you hit edit, you're going to see low, medium, and high. Basically this is just the, out, the maximum amount that you're going to pay to get your transaction through. Most people are going to want to hit high when they're buying an NFT, mainly because there usually is a lot of congestion on the Ethereum network. And when there is a lot of congestion, sometimes your transaction might not go through if it doesn't have enough gas. So you want to make sure that you give enough gas or priority to your transaction so that it goes through and that you get your NFT. So once you hit save, you have your gas fee right here and then you have your total amount that you're going to pay. Now for this NFT right here, this crazy, crazy, for this NFT right here, this crazy koalas NFT number 344, it would cost me roughly 0 0.09 Ethereum or $315 to buy this NFT right now if I hit confirm. Now since I don't want to buy this NFT, I'm just going to hit reject. But if you did want to buy it, all you'd have to do is hit confirm once you do that it's going to go through it'll take the money out of your metamask and then all you got to do is go to your OpenSea account now for reference i'm just going to use the champion sanctum nft that i got from uh, cluecoin so when you own an nft basically it's going to show up in your collection i'm not going to go to my collection because there is a kind of nsfw piece of artwork in there that i don't really want to show the general audience but if you want to find it it's not that hard to find my OpenSea collection so when you own an nft it's basically going to show up as one of one or one of two or however many you have it's it says right here that I own one of these NFTs. So the best thing to think about here is that when you're minting your NFT, it can take some time for that mint to go through. Usually it'll take up to five to 10 minutes, maybe more, really just depending on what the network congestion is looking like for the Ethereum network. Like I said earlier, if you're buying something during the day, like between noon to probably 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, you're gonna be paying more in gas because that's when the network is using the most uh, resources. That's when the most people are gonna be on the network. So your best bet is to wait until off peak hours to make sure that you're buying when the gas fees are the lowest. Now I understand you might not always have that option. Sometimes there are limited run NFTs like the Fang Gang right here. They only had 8,888 of those NFTs. Now because of that they sold out really fast. So since they sold out so fast you might have had to pay more in gas during that launch. That's really a price you got to pay. You got to weigh the pros and cons when you're buying these NFTs. If you see a piece of artwork that you really enjoy you really got to weigh on either it could possibly go to zero or it could go higher 
earlier, you really just want to think about do you like that piece of art? Do you like the way it looks? Would you mind if it went to zero? There's a few things that you really need to weigh when you're thinking about these NFTs. So like I said, guys, if you want to view your NFTs or anything that you have in the future, all you got to do is go to your OpenSea account and connect your MetaMask wallet or go through Wallet Connect. Like I said earlier, if you're using Wallet Connect or Trust Wallet, it's the exact same thing as MetaMask. They work interchangeably and they work both together on OpenSea. So one of the big things that I really want to tell you guys about before we leave is to watch out for fake OpenSea collections. After all the NFTs have been minted, the only place to buy one is going to be on the secondary market, such as OpenSea. And for new projects that are just launching, usually there's a lot of scammers that will try to create a fake collection. So to show you this for reference, here we have the real Fang Gang. You can see they have the blue check mark. So if I type Fangster, which is the name of the Fang Gang NFTs, into OpenSea, you can see a lot of different NFTs are popping up right now. This one right here is actually what was known as a pre-reveal NFT from the Fang Gang. You can see this is a complete and total scam. This is not a real NFT. This is not by the real Fang Gang. It's by Fangster1306. So this is a fake collection of Fang Gang NFTs. There's only one here, but you can understand where I'm coming from. You really got to make sure that you're buying from the right collection if you're buying on the secondary market because you could be buying from someone that's either reselling or from someone that's trying to scam you. If you buy this NFT right here, you're never going to have a real Fang Gang NFT because the Fangster uh, reveal has already been done. If you go back and see, you have these NFTs right here. These are real Fang Gang NFTs. Yes, they're by someone that isn't a Fang Gang, but these are really what they would look like. They don't look like this. This was a pre-reveal. So you're definitely getting scammed if you buy this one right here. Anyways, guys, that's about all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you slap that like button, hit subscribe, and stay up to date for all my future videos. I hope you guys enjoy your very first NFT. Make sure you guys leave a comment down below. Let me know what NFT you bought or what NFT you have. And I'll see you all in the next episode.